Good morning. Uh, Pastor is ill today, so I will be doing my best to fill in. Hopefully my entrance is not any indication of how things are going to go today. Uh, are there any announcements? Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who journeys with us these 40 days and sustains us with the gift of grace. Amen. Let us acknowledge before God and one another our need for repentance and God's mercy. Holy God, we give us to you our whole family, to all the community that we Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
pray. Merciful God, the fountain of living water, you quench our thirst and wash away our sin. Give us this water always. Bring us to drink from the well that flows with the beauty of your truth through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Exodus. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages, as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, give us water to drink. Moses said to them, why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water, and the people complained against Moses and said, why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children with livestock and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock of Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massah and Maribah because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord saying, is the Lord among us or not? Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The psalm is read responsibly. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before God's presence with thanksgiving and praise to the shout to the Lord with psalms. For you, Lord, are a great God and a great ruler above all gods. In your hands are the powers of the earth, the heights of the hills are also yours. The sea is yours, for you made it, and your hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us worship the Lord. Let us kneel before the Lord of our God. For the Lord is our God, and we are the people of God's pasture and the sheep of God's hand. Oh, that today you would hear God's voice. Are you not your heart? justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us. Because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person. Though perhaps for a good person, someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more surely, then, now that we have been justified by his blood, will we be saved through him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more surely, having been reconciled, we will be saved by his life. But more than that, we even boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Ghost. 
out full according to St. John. Jesus came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman from Samaria? Jews do not share things in common, in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you the living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us this well, and with his sons and his flocks drank from it? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come back. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying, I have no husband. For you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is for the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. <clears throat> Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Jesus, just then his disciples came. They were astonished that he was speaking with a woman, but no one said, what do you want, or why are you speaking with her? Then the woman left with her water jar and went back to the city. She said to the people, come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? They left the city and were on their way to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, surely no one has brought him something to eat. Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to complete his work. Do you not say four months more then comes the harvest? But I tell you, looking around you and see how the fields are ripe for harvesting. The reaper is already receiving wages and is gathering fruit for eternal life so that sower and reaper may rejoice together. For, for, for here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you did not labor. Others have labored and you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans from that city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I have ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with him, and he stayed there two days and many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, it is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the savior of the world. The gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise Lord. Lord. Jesus talks longer to the woman at the well than he does to anyone else in all the gospels. Longer than he talks to any of his disciples, longer than he talks to any of his accusers, longer than he talks to any of his own family. She is the first person he reveals himself to in the Gospel of John. 
She is the first outsider to discern who he is and tell others. She is the first evangelist, John tells us, and her testimony brings many to faith. Jesus' choice of her is a curious one, because when I say outsider, I mean outsider. The woman at the well was a triple outsider. In the first place, she was a Samaritan, which made her a half-breed and full pagan as far as the purists were concerned. In Jesus' time, women were not at all unfettered. Sadly, that hasn't changed much in many places and has regressed in too many states. Women were not allowed to worship with men whose morning devotions included the prayer, thank God I am not a woman. Women had no place in public life. They were not to be seen or heard, especially not by holy men who did not speak to their own wives in public. One group of pious men was known as the bruised and bleeding Pharisees because they closed their eyes when they saw a woman coming down the street, even if it meant walking into a wall and breaking their noses. She was a Samaritan and a woman, but that was not all. She was also a fallen woman. Respectable women made their trips to the well in the morning when they could greet one another and talk about the news. But this woman was one of the people they talked about, and the fact that she showed up at noon was a sure sign that she was not welcome at the morning social hour. As Jesus soon deduced, she had been married as many times as some Hollywood actors, which made it all around less painful for her to go to the well alone after the others had gone. So imagine her surprise when she comes in the heat of the day with her water bucket balanced on her head and sees a strange man sitting beside the well. He could be anyone, but when he lifts his head and asks her for a drink, she sees the olive skin, the dark eyes, the strong nose. He is no half-breed. The man is a Jew, but what in the world is he doing here? Has he lost his way? Has he lost his faith to be talking to her like that? The Jews have endless rules about what they may and may not eat and drink. She knows that much at least, and she knows that this man will be breaking the law if she lets him sit from her bucket. So they talk about it, and while it is never clear whether they are on the same wavelength, the woman understands that she wants what Jesus is offering her. Sir, give me this water, she says, which is when he tells her to go fetch her husband. It is an abrupt, abrupt change of subject to which she might object. She might say, I thought we were talking about religion. Why are you getting personal? Or she might lie. Instead, she squares her shoulders and looks him right in the eye. I have no husband, she says. And with that shred of truth from her, he tells her the rest of her truth about herself. Note that he does not pull away from her. If anything, he gets closer. He still wants a drink from her, and he still wants to give her one too, only the intimacy of it all seems suddenly too much for her. So she changes the subject back to religion again, trying to draw him back into an argument about Jews versus Samaritans. You can hardly blame her. If he knows about all her husbands, there is no telling what else he knows about her. And she decides she would rather not find out. It is time to introduce some mental static so that the man with the x-ray eyes cannot read her so well. Time to step back from him and cover herself up again. But it does not work. When she steps back, he steps toward her. When she steps out of the light, he steps into it. He will not let her retreat. If she is determined to show him less of herself, then he will show her more of himself. I know that Messiah is coming, she says. <clears throat> And he says, I am he. It is the first time he has said that to another living soul. It is a moment of full disclosure in which the triple outsider and the Messiah of God stand face to face with no pretense about who they are. Both stand fully lit at high noon for one bright moment in time, while all the rules, taboos, and history that separate them fall forgotten to the ground. By telling the woman who she is, Jesus shows her who he is. By confirming her true identity, he reveals his own, and that is how it still happens. The Messiah is the one in whose presence you know who you really are. The good and bad of it. The all of it. The hope in it. The Messiah is the one who shows you who you are by showing you who he is. Who crosses all boundaries, 
breaks all rules, drops all disguises. Speaking to you like someone you have known all your life, bubbling up in your life like a well that needs no dipper, so that you go back to face people you thought you could never face again, speaking to them as boldly as he spoke to you. Come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. God doesn't ever back away from you. Amen. Sustained by God's abundant mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of creation. We pray for your church. Bless partnerships with other Christians and interreligious dialogue. Guide the daily work of denominational and con congregational leaders. Strengthen our combined witness for the sake of the gospel that all experience your life-giving love. Merciful God, receive our prayer. prayer. We pray for the universe, all creation teems with life, from the depths of the earth and seas to the skies above. Fill us with awe and reverence for the diversity and preservation of life. Merciful God, 
receive our prayer. We pray for the nations of the world, topple the dividing walls that separate us from our neighbors. Form us into your beloved community for a diversity of gender, race, language, ability, and ethnic origin is celebrated and affirmed. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray for those who suffer in mind, body, or spirit. Be present with all who are lonely and give courage to all who are afraid. Comfort those who live with chronic illness or other sickness, especially those we name in our hearts or out loud. Give them your living water always, merciful God. Receive our prayer. We pray for this congregation, especially those preparing for baptism. Nurture their faith and pour your love into their hearts. Inspire our community by their testimony to God's grace in their lives. Merciful God, receive our prayer. prayer. We give thanks for the lives of all your saints. Their hope in you sustain lives of faith and service. Encourage us with the hope they shared in you. Merciful God, receive our prayer. prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your steadfast love and your promise to renew your whole creation through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you.
illume our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need, awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end, bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we do those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. God, the giver of love, Christ, the resurrection and the life, and the Holy Spirit of rebirth, bless you in this Lenten journey. Amen. Amen.